Hello guys, welcome to Inequalities 3. I hope you guys are all fresh. This is going to be a slightly lengthier video because I'm going to cover uh, a very, very important idea. I'm going to start this video by talking about compound inequalities. Basically, when there are mixture of different uh, ands, ors, uh, a common area that, that you want to take for x and so on and so forth and then extend it to the concept of tick and cross method. So I hope you're ready. Buckle up. Let's move forward. So we're going to start by understanding something called as and and or in inequalities. So let's start with this idea. Now, what is and how is it used? Now, in the last video, we have ended by talking about a small example of number line and using and. So we're going to use and continue that uh, concept and we're going to take an in-depth look at what is the meaning of this word and. Now let's take an example where I say x is greater than 5 and x is less than 8. What does it mean? It means on my number line, this is my 5, this is my 8. I want my x to be greater than 5. So first plot what is greater than 5. And, and means the second condition should also happen simultaneously. And x is less than 8. So the less than 8 is this part. So if both of them are happening simultaneously means the common area for both. So remember, and is basically intersection. For those of you who know the basics of set theory, it is and means it is intersection. So I want intersection of the first x greater than 5 and the second x less than 8. And you can see from the number line, your x is between 5 to 8. Now, 8 was not included, 5 was not included. So finally, in your answer also, these are not included. Had it been x greater than or equal to 5 and x less than or equal to 8, then the final answer would have been like this. You will include 8 and 5 in your answers. Now, please keep in mind, 8 and 5, why are they included in both? Because when you draw a number line, 5 and 8. 5 is included in your first region and 8 also is included in your sec in your first region. And when you draw the second region, 8 is included in the second region, 5 also is included in the second region. So the whole idea is 5 is there in both the regions. Hence 5 is included in my final answer. So to give you a counter example, let's look at this. If I say x is greater than 6 and y is less than 10, less than or equal to 10. So what happens here? You have a 6 and you have a 10. Less than or equal to 10 is this entire region. Greater than or equal to 6 is this entire region. But remember, when you want to point 10, it is included. I will put a dark circle like this. It is included in both my regions. Whereas 6 is not included in both. I'll put an open circle. This is called as open circle. This is called as closed circle. So basically it means the end point 6 is not included in one of the regions. Hence it cannot be there in my final answer. Whereas 10 is included in both the regions. Hence it can be there in my answer. Now this representation is also given in this format. When I want to write uh, x in, in range of two numbers, endpoint 1 and endpoint 2, I write it in the format of a comma b with brackets. There are different types of brackets I can use. And I'll explain what does each of these brackets mean. Now, here if I want to write, for you to understand, this answer actually becomes x belongs to. Now this is belongs to. Belongs to means it can be in the region. 6 to 10. So the end points you will mention. And now the this bracket is called as the uh, curved bracket 
but the name given to this is called open, open bracket. The square bracket, the name given to it is called a closed bracket. So open bracket means the end point does not belong to your answer. It does not, is not included in your answer. Clearly six should be an open bracket for me. Closed bracket means the end point belongs to the answer or it is there as a part of your answer. So 10 should be a closed bracket. So square bracket is used to represent the inclusion of the endpoints. Open bracket is used to represent the exclusion of the endpoints. Okay. Now, what if, what if I say, uh, but of course, uh, these two, this means both are included here means both are excluded and depending upon which side is open, which side is closed, that endpoint is working. That's, that's how your brackets are written. It's, it's very simple. But what if I get an answer of X where X is non zero, uh, X is not zero. Sorry. Let's write it as, okay. Let's take a case where X is not equal to zero. And I say X is greater than minus two, X is less than or equal to three. How do I plot this? I want to look at three conditions now. So I am looking at zero minus two is here and three is here. So greater than minus two, but remember minus two is not included. So open circle and less than or equal to minus three like this. So closed circle. My answer when I write my X belongs to negative two to three, three is included negative two is excluded, but this is not the end point because you can see that zero is somewhere in between and X cannot be zero. Now the problem for me is how do I show this now? When I write minus two to three automatically zero is coming in between. How do I deal with it? This can be done in two ways. First, first way of writing it is you say you put minus and flower brackets, you'll put zero. It means whatever you put in this flower bracket, it is counted independently. Independently means if I write flower bracket zero and one, it means separately zero, separately one. It does not talk about zero to one. See this bracket here, this bracket talks the range, whereas flower brackets talks about each individual value. So you're basically saying that from the range of negative two to three, just subtract zero because it is not a part of your answer. That is a meaning. That is one way of putting it. Another way of putting it is look, zero should not be there. So you can write it without or you can write it in this form minus two put a break at zero okay plus or you use that to use the right technical term it's union we didn't cover union yet so i was putting plus that's okay zero two three three included zero not included so effectively what you're saying is wherever that zero point is there you can put a break there and union represents addition. Addition is not the mathematical addition. It's saying this area plus this area. It's the addition of areas. It is not common area now. Intersection. So it, in fact, that intersection is the area that we have seen, right? Intersection means common to both. The next thing that we're going to learn about is R and R represents union. And union talks about addition of areas. It doesn't matter whether uh, first area and second area, anything is common or not. It says overall, what is the total area? That's what it talks about. So that's where we're going to get into the next part, which is compound inequalities using R, which is union. So if I say, find me an X, which is greater than five or uh, X is less than eight. What does it mean? It means I have five here and I have eight here. X is greater than five is this area. 
x is less than 8 is this area in fact you will notice that the entire number line is covered entire number line is covered and or or represents addition of areas or union union means joining addition right so i want to add both the areas doesn't matter what is common what is not as long as it is an area i will take it into my answer so the entire number line becomes your answer so here you'll say x belongs to real numbers other way of putting it is x belongs to negative infinity to positive infinity now one thing to keep in mind infinity will always infinite symbol will always have an open bracket it's a very nice interesting logic because see bracket square bracket you use this when the end point can be reached when you can include the end point you can you your answer can reach that end point infinite is a concept that can never be reached that's the whole idea infinite means forever it's going so you can never reach your goal that is the reason they put only an open bracket and never a closed bracket for an infinite symbol anyway so if you're looking at and and or uh, if you're looking at or right now Basically, you're joining up the areas. So let's take another example. If I say I want to find 2x greater than x minus 5, or I need uh, 3x less than minus 15. So let's take a look at what is happening here. I have x greater than negative 5. In fact, let's make this. Let's make this 20, uh, 27. So to get some something to, to deal with. And then you have R. So you'll have X less than minus nine. So you want to plot both these. So you have a negative nine and you have a negative five. Greater than negative five is this area. Less than negative nine is this area. You want only the combination of these two areas together, not common. You want to join these two areas. So x belongs to always start from the negative side negative infinity to negative 9 now remember 9 is not included union union symbol is used when you're joining the areas negative 5 to positive infinity this is how you deal with compound inequalities and the particular portion called r next we're going to look at how do we deal with combination of them together Let's take an example. And now we are getting into slowly getting into more compound inequality. So if I give you, uh, if I say a into b is greater than zero, then there are two possibilities. What is the first case? First case is a is greater than zero and b is greater than zero. Correct. Second case, which means or, or a is greater than uh, less than zero and b is also less than zero so here this is a compound inequality where i'm using both and and or so my final answer whatever i get from here and whatever I get from here i should join them both so i should put a union for answer here and answer here let us see with a actual value if i say x minus 2 into x plus 3 is greater than zero it means case one what do i have it means x minus two is greater than zero and x plus three is greater than zero or i have x minus two is less than zero and x minus three is less than zero let us see how does this how does this come forward so let me try this in the number line i have a negative three and i have a two i want x greater than two because that is what this means. X minus two is less, greater than zero means X is greater than two. And this gives me X less than minus three. But remember, I need and, and means intersection. Now, is there anything common here? Is there anything common? Nothing. So no X or, or still stays. I will again draw the number line for the second case. I have, this is x plus 3, right? So mm, minus 3 here and plus 2 here. Now x is less than, so remember this becomes x is less than 2. 
So it becomes like this. And this gives me x is less than negative 3. Okay. Negative 3 means this part. What is common to both? Now common to both is the area here. So here I'll get x belongs to minus infinity comma minus 3. Both open. Now final answer, it should be this answer, union, this answer. Clearly no x means there is no answer there. So effectively my answer will be written as x belongs to negative infinity comma negative 3. Now you don't have to do it so long. You don't have to do it in such an elaborate fashion. I'm telling you the logic of how, do, how does this work out. But thankfully for questions like this, to make your life easier, to make your life simple, we have a method called tick and cross method. We have a method called tick and cross method. And we're going to take a big example, not a small example like this. We're going to take a huge example and try to solve the tick and cross method approach. Okay. Well, uh, let's see what is this tick and cross and uh, why, how will it make my calculations faster? So let's start with this inequality. This is the first uh, video I showed you. You'll be able to solve inequalities like this. Now, the tick and cross method, ideally here, if you go by the logic of component inequalities, it means this is your A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now look at how many possibilities you'll have. It may, first case number one, all are positive. A is greater than zero, and B is greater than zero, and C is greater than zero like this. Then case number two, I can have two negatives and everything else positive. So A is less than zero, B is less than zero, C is greater than zero, and like this. So I can have all these possibilities, but you don't have to deal with all of that. So the tick and cross method makes your life easier. But there are certain rules to follow this. So understand here the tick and cross method is a derivation of the compound inequalities that we did. Basically, the same concept applies. Case one, case two, case three. What is the logic by which left hand side can become positive? Obviously, all positives will make it positive. Or two negatives and everything else positive can make it positive, and so on and so forth. So putting all the cases together, instead of doing so many cases, they shortened it and they formed this method. So what is this method talking about? First, the rule for it. Your first rule is for, first note down all the boundary points. Now, what is the meaning of a boundary point? Take just the value within the bracket, equate it to zero. So you will say x plus five equal to zero, you will get x equal to minus five. Similarly, the next thing you'll get x minus seven equal to zero, you'll get x equal to seven. Like this, you do it for all the brackets. The points you get are called as boundary points. Let me note down these boundary points and we will call them as original boundary points. Now, why is it called original boundary points? You will see at the end. Now, the boundary points here are minus 5, 7, minus 3, 2, 0, and minus 5. Let's move on to the second step. This is the first step. The second step says eliminate all the even power terms, which means any term that is any bracket with an even power straight away, take it out, delete it, which means I don't need this. I don't need this. Good. My life became slightly easier. That's your second step. Any even power terms, throw it out. So what, what am I left with? I'm left with X minus seven whole cube x plus 3 whole power 5 by x minus 2 x cube greater than or equal to 0. This is my second step. Step number 3. Step number 3 says for odd power terms, keep only the expressions without the power. So what it says is look, when there are odd powers, even powers you throw it out. All powers, just delete the powers. Don't keep the power, keep the bracket. So this will now transform into x minus 7 because I will take out the power. x plus 3, I, will, I took out the power. x minus 2 did not have power anyway. And x, I took out the power. Greater than or equal to 0. I transformed it into this. All this is transformation. The fourth step, 
says find the temporary boundary points for the new expression so now again find the boundary points so i will call them as temporary boundary points what are the boundary points here 7 negative 3 2 and 0 7 negative 3 2 and 0 so till here there is no calculation it's just simplification that we did that's all now step number 5 step number 5 is that tick and cross methods now what is this tick and cross method once you get the boundary points the temporary boundary points draw these boundary points on your number line so you have a negative 3 you have a 0 you have a 2 and you have a 7 this is your uh, fifth step but this is not the only this is the starting point of the fifth step now how do i use this tick and cross method the tick and cross method says you have look at the regions you have region number 1 or region number let's call it region a b c d and e now take any one number from region e any number and put it in the new transformed version of your equation and see what happens so if i take any number let's say see remember region e is this entire big thing so i can take let's say x equal to 10 if i take x equal to 10 from this region and Put it in your inequality and see what happens. But don't waste your time calculating it. Just find the sign. 10 minus 7 is positive. 10 plus 3 is positive. 10 minus 2 is positive. And 10 itself is positive. Now, when you have four positive numbers multiplying and dividing, definitely it should be greater than or equal to 0. This is true. Correct? So, if one number satisfies the inequality the entire region is called as a true region or it is called as a tick region that is where the tick and cross name comes from you will put a tick to this region from here onwards alternately start putting cross and tick alternately you can start with any region by the way starting point checking you can do for any region you can start with d b c any region checking is one point you take Put it in the inequality and see what happens. Is the left hand side actually turning out to be positive? Don't waste your time calculating. Just find the sign. Is it positive? If it is positive and it is uh, the inequality is valid, you call it as a true region. If it is true, it means that it's a tick. Automatically, the next left side and right side of it becomes crosses. Okay. Uh, so alternate. It's always alternate after that. So your final answer, now you will write your answer, the, the step number six. Uh, in fact, before we get to step number five itself, the last part of step number five, you will write your x belongs to only the tick regions are your answers. So negative infinity to negative three, union, zero to two, union, seven comma infinity. Now, make it a habit not to put your brackets. I'll tell you why you should not put your brackets. Let me put down these numbers correctly. Uh, okay, 0 to 2. And then you have 7 to infinity. Now, which bracket to put? That is where the next step comes in. Okay, now the step number 6 is, this is not your answer. You have to check your final answer with your original boundary points you have to check your answer with your original boundary points now what were the original boundary points if you remember these were the original boundary points uh, where was that Right, so I just rewrote uh, the points so that the original boundary points were visible. They were not visible earlier. So yeah, these are the original boundary points. Now, I, the reason why I asked you not to put the brackets is you have to verify, are these boundary points valid for me or not, first of all. So let's start with the negative 5. Can I have x as negative 5? You will notice that when I put x equal to negative 5, my denominator becomes 0. Please guys, remember, why even while you cancel this, still x plus 5 will be remaining. And x, x because of this cannot be negative 5. 
So first of all, negative five should not be there in my answer. So check is negative five a part of my answer? You can see that there is a negative five here. It should not be a part of your answer. So that should be gone. That's okay. I took out negative five. Okay. Then what about seven? Can seven be a part of my answer? Check it. Seven can be a part of your answer because when your numerator becomes zero, there is no problem. So seven should be included. Now put a close bracket. See, infinite you can always put an open bracket because there is no problem with it. But every endpoint you have to check. What about negative three? Can x become negative three? Yes, because you can see when x is negative three, once again the numerator is becoming zero, which is not a problem. Zero is obviously greater than or equal to zero. So negative three can be included. What about uh, two? Can so remember the next is two. So what about two? When you put x equal to two, your denominator becomes zero. So two cannot be included. So two should be an open bracket. For the same reason, zero also is open bracket. Okay. Now already negative five. I checked once. I don't have to check again. So that's okay. So my answer. This is my final answer. This is how tick and cross method works. All right. Now one interesting fact that you need to understand. Let's let me explain to you with an example. If I if I ask what is the answer to x plus one whole power four into x minus two by x plus three and x plus one whole square. Less than zero. Now let's say this is this is what you want to solve. So what you do is you write down your first original boundary points. What are your original boundary points? Your original boundary points are negative one, two, negative three. I will not write negative one again because it's already written. Now the second uh, phase is to take out the even powers and keep only the odd terms. So I will have x minus two by x plus three. Less than zero. I need to deal with this. It becomes a, such a small, easy, sweet thing. Now my temporary boundary points are negative three and two, right? So my boundary points from here are negative three and two, and I can find the tick and cross method here. I will take x equal to ten and substitute. What do I get? I will get positive and positive. Obviously, positive by positive is not negative, so it is cross. It is false. So this will be tick and this will be cross. So my x belongs to negative three comma two. I will not put the bracket. Before putting the bracket, I will go and check with my original boundary points. Now, what about minus one? Can minus one be there? Now you might say that this is getting cancelled. So what is the problem? Minus one can be there. Actually, the answer cannot have minus one. Please keep in mind. Whenever your question is given to you as it is, whenever a question is given to you as it is, you have to make sure that your your answer is defined without any further manipulation after that. So when you're cancelling out this square and you're writing it too, there is a cutting which is happening. So please remember, already if your denominator is zero, how are you cancelling it? Right. If your x is negative one, which means denominator has a zero. Then how will you cancel? Zero by zero, you cannot cancel out, right? Hence, x cannot be minus one. And this is the point which I want to say. Even when something is cancelling, please make sure that the boundary point is checked at the denominator point, not after cancelling. Okay. So x cannot be negative one. So negative one is gone. Now please remember, before you write it blindly, is negative one there? You can see that negative one is here. It is included. Hence, I'm writing it. Otherwise, I don't have to write it. Then, what about two? Can two be included? Now, you'll notice that numerator x equal to two, no problem. So, two is included. And what about negative three? You can see that denominator x equal to negative three becomes zero, which is not accepted. So, my answer is this. Or, as I already explained, you can also write it as negative three to negative one, both open because both cannot be included. Union negative one to Two closed, negative one open. This is how you deal with your tick and cross method. And no matter how big the expression is, you can simplify and do this within a jiffy. Trust me, guys. If you practice this well, you will be able to do such kind of questions within thirty seconds flat. 
you can do it in 30 seconds flat okay now one uh, uh, small point uh, that that i want to talk about and uh, close the session oh, okay so the important part here which one point which i want to talk about and end the session is the tick and cross method is only applicable when the right hand side is zero or uh, basically it's a constant zero the sign can be anything any number that comes in this place you cannot use a tick and cross method let me show you what i mean so let us say x square or rather i have x into x plus 2 is greater than negative 1 now i can't use my tick and cross method directly for this so what am i supposed to do i'm supposed to first bring this number to the left hand side so i will write it as x square plus 2x plus 1 is now greater than 0 and now you can see that right hand side is 0 so i can factorize this i can factorize this and then use my tick and cross method in fact you can see this is nothing but x plus 1 whole square is greater than 0 and this is always true except one case what is that one case x is not equal to minus 1 x cannot be equal to minus 1 because when x is equal to minus 1 my left hand side is 0 and 0 is not greater than 0 so except for negative 1 every other possibility is fine so the way to write the answer is x belongs to real numbers minus minus 1 well guys so that's your ticket cross method for you it has been a long session take a break have some coffee or tea if you drink uh, well see you in the next session with the graphical interpretation it's going to be a short video not not long uh, so i hope this session has been helpful to quite a few of you thank you and see you in the next session